This is a 2003 PT Cruiser GT 2.4 liter turbo with the manual transmission. Now recently the clutch stopped working. The driver couldn't release the clutch to pick up first gear reverse and it turns out the reservoir was empty for the clutch hydraulic fluid. They add a little bit of fluid and they got most of the clutch functionality back doesn't have much reserve travel off the bottom, and it's a little bit spongy feeling at the top, so we've probably got some air bubbles in there. But most importantly, that fluid went somewhere. It didn't evaporate, so I already took a look at the slave cylinder and it's weeping fluid. So, unfortunately, <laughs> this slave cylinder is on the inside, so we have to take the transmission out to replace it. And while we're there, we'll take a look at the clutch and see what the condition of the clutch is. Now, this clutch is a modular clutch. The flywheel, the disc, and cover are bolted as an assembly, and at the factory they're installed on the input shaft of the transmission first, and then married to the engine. That's how we're going to take it apart. We're going to service this, remove the transmission, as if it was an automatic. We're going to take the torque converter off with the transmission. We're going to take the modular clutch off with the manual transmission. So. I've got some work to do. Let's get started on this PT Cruiser. This is just an overview of the engine compartment. Air cleaner, battery, and probably a few other things are going to have to come out of here. The battery tray, the entire air intake system is probably going to be put off to the side. But there's the reservoir for the clutch hydraulic release system. Now during the test drive I noticed that the shifter was a little bit uh, loose. And there's the pin and there's the remains of the bushing in the end of the cable. So when you move the stick back and forth, or fore and aft, it's loose out here. Now this bottom one is real loose. The green one, there's nothing holding that one onto the pin correctly. That one is very, very loose. So we got to find a way to either repair or replace these cables in order to get this selector working the way it was designed. Now this is the connection for the slave cylinder. This is the sliding ring that I have to push in to disconnect the tabs. This is the pressure line coming off the master. So I'm going to put the tool in between the sliding sleeve and that coupling flange right there. I'm going to push it in. And pack that in a little bit. And there it is, it's disconnected. Now we're looking at the bottom of the engine and I've removed a piece they actually call a structural collar. It holds part of the uh, intercooler tubing and power steering hoses. And this is actually a flex plate right here. So this modular clutch and dual mass flywheel is attached to the flex plate. Now this is how we get it off because I want to take it off as one big piece. I'm going to rotate the engine there's a uh, little plug on the passenger side inner fender liner. I remove that and remove this bolt. Take this bolt out all the way, and rotate it 90 degrees, and bring up the next one. And continue until all four are removed. All right, the engine is supported from above with a special engine support. Transmission, transaxle is on the uh, jack right now. All the bolts are removed, and the transaxle is actually kind of loose. So all I got to do is back it up a little bit, I hope. And I'll have to come down with the engine. You know, I let the engine come down a little bit. And notice now we just get to kind of drop it straight down. So being able to tilt this transaxle on a real jack, it's very helpful. Didn't have to pull it out of the splines. Just come straight down and out. And there's the back of the dual mass flywheel. Everything stayed on the input shaft of the transaxle. Now this is where the bolt goes. It went through the flex plate 
and attached. Turns out that the bolts for the transaxle mount are the same size. So I put two of them in, thread them in a little bit. I'm just going to use those as handles to lift the entire modular clutch system off. And there's the concentric slave cylinder. And uh, I'd say it's been leaking. Now the new slave cylinder is installed and there's four bolts that attach it. But there's a very specific tightening process. First to 18 inch pounds, then 44 inch pounds, and finally 74 inch pounds. And make sure that the holes inside the transmission case are good and clean. And finally the fourth bolt up here. Now the three step tightening process. What this is, is let me use the old slave cylinder for a second. This is a two piece system back here. This steel inner sleeve is attached to this aluminum case, or a casting, excuse me. And there's a little bit of a crimp here. But that crimp isn't strong enough to hold it under pressure. So until it's bolted up on the front of the transmission case, it doesn't have the mechanical strength to hold the pressure. So one of the things we don't recommend when you see a slave cylinder of this type is to take it in your hands and compress it and, you know, feel it. Compress the preload spring, etc. Because this back plate, until it's attached, mounted on the front of the transmission case, is just held in place with this crimp. It doesn't have the mechanical strength of being mounted on the transmission. So resist the temptation to uh, squeeze the slave cylinder. Get it mounted, get it installed, get it bled. Now something that I think is all too frequently overlooked is cleaning the transmission input shaft splines. Get all the crud off of there. Take a wire brush, a scratch brush, something. Get down inside here and clean all those teeth. When everything is good and clean, open up the little pack of spline lubricant and squirt it out onto the input shaft splines. Distribute it. And what I'll do is I'll take the little packet here and I use it like a little spreader, a little spatula, and distribute the grease all around the splines. The grease is there to help prevent the formation of rust over time. So we're going to put just a little bit there. Please, no anti-seize on the spline. Anti-seize is the wrong stuff. Now while I'm preparing the transmission cases and getting everything detailed here, something else I'll do is I'll put just a little bit of grease on the dowel sleeve holes and the dowel sleeves themselves. This will help slide the transmission on to the sleeves and I hope prevent some corrosion on those steel sleeves. Just a little bit. Now I used a couple of the transaxle mount bolts as handles to lift the entire modular dual mass flywheel, pressure plate, and clutch disc up as a complete assembly under the input shaft. So this right now is ready to install on the engine. Well, a few minutes later and the entire transaxle is in place. Well, it's not exactly a few minutes, but it is easier than if this was not a modular design. But now, the next problem I had was the bolt wasn't lined up with the flex plate. So I tried to rotate the entire modular clutch into position and it wouldn't rotate. The lugs on the back of the flywheel were kind of interfering with the welds on the flex plate, the drive plate. So the clutch was being pushed forward by the preload spring on the slave cylinder. So all I did was I went through the bleed screw hole with a small screwdriver and just rolled it around, bumped it past that little weld on there and got a bolt to line up. Now we're going to put a good drop of medium strength thread locking compound on the bolt, put that in, snug it up, repeat this three more times and then we'll come back and torque all four bolts to 65 pound-feet. And I'm going to use the crank pulley, rotate the engine around, bring up the next bolt. I think you can see it's pretty tight quarters underneath here. There's not a, enough room for a traditional socket, so I'm using a crow's foot at 90 degrees to the head. Got the engine blocked. Give it a pull. Got a click. 65 pound-feet. Now I'm going to connect the pressure line to the slave cylinder, remove the little white 
dust plug. You don't need to remove the clip. I've got the new O-ring and the new sleeve already in position. Just push it in, give it a little pull. You should hear that clip lock around there. Now one thing is you push these in, and this goes with any of these types of connectors, whether it's the black or the gold. Don't put your hand up here pushing on that sleeve, because what that does is that pushes it in and it can actually prevent any of the clip systems at all from locking onto the connector. So there we are, we're connected. Okay, it's time to bleed this system. Now, in my experience and opinion, generally speaking, brake bleeding techniques, traditional pump the pedal, hold, open the bleed screw, are very ineffective on almost all clutch hydraulic release systems. And this particular one has even got a little bit of an extra twist to uh, challenge us. When it's mounted on the front of the transaxle, it's mounted roughly like this. The pressure line connection is the high point. The bleed screw is the low point. So if you're in air bubble, you're gonna be up here, up top. That's where air wants to go, it wants to rise. So as you're trying to push fluid down, you're trying to push a bubble down. And that's uh, a little bit of a challenge. Let's take a look from the back side. Now this is kind of roughly how it would sit on the transaxle. So fluid is going to try to come in here. It's going to come into this black section, which illustrates the pressure chamber, the cavity in se itself. So the fluid's going to come in, it's going to drip to the bottom and try to fill up the bottom with fluid and eventually go out the bleed screw. But in the meantime, we've developed a big air bubble up here at the top. How do you get this air bubble to go down and out? Well, the service manual for this basically says you have to reverse fluid inject this system. So I'm going to hook up a hand pump and I'm gonna push fluid in through the bleed screw, through the bleed line, it's gonna come in here and the fluid is going to start to fill up the bottom of this chamber inside there. And as it fills up, it's just going to keep filling up. Come on up. And it's going to push those air bubbles out the top all the way up through this system. So we're going to fill this chamber up from the bottom and the last thing that's gonna happen is those last air bubbles are going to go out the top and back up through the master cylinder and be pushed all the way out through the reservoir. This is the reverse fluid injection pump I'm gonna use. This pump will take fluid from the bottle and squirt it up through the system. And while it's doing that, it's just going to push fluid. It's designed not to push air bubbles up there. So let me get it primed, we'll get it hooked up and hopefully in just a few minutes we'll have this PT Cruiser bled. All right, the reverse fluid injection system is all primed and hooked up. I'm underneath the car. And I'm starting to inject some fluid. We've got our first fluid coming up. Now when I started the reverse fluid injection process, the fluid that came up still had a little bit of old fluid in it. So I removed that, continued the process, flush some fluid in, remove that, flush some fluid in, and we got clear fluid. So we have a clutch pedal, we're good to go on the hydraulic system. Well the installation of the modular clutch and concentric slave cylinder on the PT Cruiser is complete. This is a bit of a different installation. Remember, modular removes differently, installs differently. But the big twist on this one was the concentric slave cylinder. The bleed screw was the lowest point, and we used that for the reverse fluid injection process and pushed fluid up through the system, 
filling up the entire clutch hydraulic release system. If you have any questions about a clutch, flywheel, or a hydraulic release system, please call Perfection at our toll-free tech support hotline.